So good morning to you. We're here with Ray and Jeff. We're actually in Orlando, Florida, Disney World, for those of you who might know it from the rest of the world. Now, it's very interesting. We've been all morning, we've been looking at stuff here. You know, every market is completely different. And once again, we're perplexed by the, by the changes and the differences in the type of property and the type of market. Ray, Jeff, tell us a little bit about yourselves. You know, you know the market, you've been in the game a long time. What are you doing here? What are you finding in the market here? Uh, my, I've been in the market for, I've uh, been a broker for about eight years here locally. And um, we've been uh, buying and selling properties for the last few years. And we've seen the market drop change dram uh, dramatically. A lot of uh, competition in the market nowadays, especially in the certain uh, niche properties that that, uh, that do make uh, do, do are that are very profitable for um, for investors. And it's just been a uh, major change in the way um, things are done. There's so many offers uh, and demand for properties that make money. Not every segment is like that, but certainly the segment that we're in, uh, that's what we see uh, every day. So, I mean, I am. Um you know, I sit in South Africa and, and I know Disney World, I think I came here when I was 13 years old or whatever it is. And my perception is straight off that the world economy is in trouble, people aren't coming on holiday. Therefore, like Las Vegas, Orlando is going to be in trouble, all the employees are going to get retrenched, they're going to leave Orlando. I'm going to be left with a whole lot of houses and no, you know, no tenants. What's the reality? Our, our, our parks are, are packed, um, restaurants are packed, shopping is, is uh, rampant. <laughs> You know, I mean, we, we have no shortage of uh, tourists. Uh, that's the number of 50 million. 50 uh, million people per year that come through, and that, that's been steady since 07. Okay. So even since 07, 08, 09, when we supposedly had some kind of recession, we didn't feel it here at all. We've had um, record numbers uh, at the theme parks every year, um, and record numbers in the in the uh, Orlando International Airport every single year, and that translates into attendance in the properties, attendance at the, at the uh, theme park, um, and you know, the economy in general. I mean, just to give you, because there's some outstanding numbers. I mean, Disney World alone employs 70,000 people. Mm -hmm. I think you said it was Universal Studios that was 10,000 people. Was it the other about way around? 20, was it 20,000? And it was um, SeaWorld, or what was it? What was it? Mm -hmm. SeaWorld, it was another 10,000. So you're looking at over 100,000 people just in those three parks, mm -hmm. with 50 million people coming in based on tourism. Right. It's quite astounding in terms of what yeah. is actually happening. And, and that very much ties in with your strategy. You've spoken a little bit about your investment niche. Tell us a bit about that. You know why that area, why that sector of the market, and who your tenants are. Well, we we, uh, we do want to cater to that type of clientele or those kind of tenants. They're, they're, that's on the on the west side of town. But any property that we would choose, we want it in that area, so that we can kind of harness that rental pool from people that are working all the time, uh, that are you know solid tenants. They have stable jobs, stable employment, and keep in mind that it's all tourism uh, related. So the hotels, the restaurants, all those things, as long as they stay stable, which they have been, and they always will. Uh, the way everything is structured, the way that Orlando is marketed, um, that's just a stable tenant. So we like the feeder to make sure that the uh, properties are near are near them, so they can commute easily, uh, and that, that you know that the owner of the property can always get their rental um, because they don't have a solid tenant base. So what price range are we in? What are we talking? Are we talking five hundred thousand dollars? Where where no. are we basically? We're anywhere between forty five and fifty, and say seventy five, eighty on per condo, um, and anywhere starting between sixty five to seventy and one twenty to fifty five. Depending on where, on where they are in the town. So Orlando has uh, 2 million people. There are some different sections. We want to make sure that we're always near some kind of an employment hub everywhere that we're going to You said there's, a, there's about 2 million people here at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of factors are going to bring more people in here? Can you talk a bit about that? Sure. The, the, one of the major things for Florida is the baby boom, what they call the baby boomers, which are the people that were born uh, from uh, 41 to 1950 along in there, which is our major generation uh, of, of older folks. They're retiring at a staggering rate. They're retiring at 10,000 people per day. 10,000 people per day? Across the country. Wow. That's not just Florida, that's across the country. But a lot of them, when they retire, they want to go to where there's a good climate, um, certainly opportunity of different kinds, and Florida has no state income tax. That's a, kind of a big factor. A lot of them want to come here. It's not certainly for the weather, but also for the state, uh, for no state income tax. Yep. Uh, and there's just so many of them. And we're Florida projected for, I think it's a million people per year. Uh, influx of population, so we have there's really no one in sight. I think you said a thousand people a week, didn't you? In terms of the number of people yes. coming in. Yes, yes. You know, because for me it's very simple in the property game, and we've all learned this through the global financial crisis. If you stick to the fundamentals of property of supply and demand, and if there's a thousand people coming in every week, that's a very good sign, you know, in terms of Absolutely. what's happening. And that's, that's why we like it here. We know it's a hub where there's going to be people moving in, there's going to be industry that moves here for the, there's a lot of tax advantages for companies to come here start their business or expand their business here for is real good for that, create an environment for that in terms of taxes, and just continue to grow. And, and, you, and you, have side, you, have, you have solid tenants that are yeah. actual paying tenants and actual returns. So what are you putting in terms of the GFC, the financial crisis? I mean, the whole of the year, GFC has been affected. 
So where are we, where are we now? In what stage are we in? The, are we in the recovery stage? Are we at the bottom? Are we picking up? Where are we in Florida? Because I picked up these, these various stages in various states. Mm -hmm. It's definitely uh, segmented uh, throughout the country. In Florida, because of the, I mean, we've seen it over the last probably three or four years, where the foreclosures and, and that whole thing kind of started three or four years ago. Now you see where places even like this, beautiful places like this, four years uh, four years ago it was it was that there were foreclosures, there was a lot of, them. but now there's been so many they've all been sold. We've had this kind of trough uh, for for this amount of time, and now to the point where those have already gone been gone you know, they've gone through them already. People that paid that they paid you know triple this amount. They've already been foreclosed, somebody else bought it, somebody else bought it more and more and more, and now it's kind of stable. HOAs are stable. stable. Are there still going to be more? Of course, there'll still be more. There'll still be people that are uh, underwater on their on their, on their loan. But as that as, as those start to reset, you, a, a large majority of HOAs have already been uh, reset with the new owner that's now paying current, has a property that's worth probably right about what they paid for it instead of, <laughs> instead of the alternative. And you're starting to see that really turn around. It's been, it's been turning around by the last year. And it's you know it's, it's slowly uh, slowly turning. But I mean, again, we always joke about crystal ball. But you know, <laughs> where, where to from here? I mean, what do you what, what, what are your perceptions basically? In terms of uh, in just well, in terms of growth and, and where the market's going, are we going to see it bump along the bottom in terms of that stable phase for quite a long time? Or are you starting to see a lot of offers being put in oh. and and people starting to almost you know are the prices starting to rise now because there's more confidence in the market right well if that's the indicator or you mentioned offers if the yeah. offers the amount of offers on these property is the indicator then we've already turned around because there's been so many offers on the offers. remember in, this is just in the snitch i want to clarify it's not the whole u.s and it's really not all the four it's certain yeah. segments where that's still struggling uh but in places like this you know real nice uh, communities where they're easy to rent they're affordable they're nice they're great amenities in that niche multiple offers, multiple, there's a lot of demand in there. So we've seen the prices go up in the last couple of years. Even when everybody said it was, that wasn't the case. The reality is we, everybody pays more for them because there's more demand. And they're, and they're in the, in the, in the So it's one thing paying a little bit more for a really good quality property with a good quality tenant that you can get a really good yield from. But, but what about um, rental growth? I know we've talked about the population growth, but what are you seeing on rental growth at the moment? Um, well, rental growth meaning meaning like in the you know sort of immediate future of the next year or two you know is, is there solid rental growth what's what's driving right yeah I, I mean and, and I, I think what what happened is, is that uh, because of so many people are losing their homes they have to put somewhere so you have just you know reset. Reset. Made, yeah major reset of that and and, uh, and whereas uh, even though we've gone to uh, central and the other places in Iceland when we first started over there rent for a two bedroom might have been the you know, seven fifty a hundred and now it's nine hundred and also the demand for good quality places to rent. Um, you know, it's more so obviously about men. Yeah. Uh, so we, I mean, we are seeing a good growth in rents, yeah. basically. Yeah. Yeah. Owners yeah. and yeah. property managers can now be a little more selective also for that same reason. There's a lot of people that do need to rent and they can kind of, you know, kind of get better tenants in, the, in that way and they can be a little more selective where they didn't use yeah. One of the nice things you guys uh, mentioned while, while we were traveling around um, is that you actually, you rehab them to the point where you give them really nice finishes, nice paint, nice uh, you know, ceiling fans and, and doorknobs and, you know, just those little touches that make the tenant feel happy about living there. Um, yeah, we've, we've had a, a lot of, uh, we've had property managers that have showed our uh, our properties and also showed three or four others that were not available in that same set development. Um, and, uh, and ours just are above comparison to the other ones because the tenant's going to look at, if they look at three and they see one that needs carpet, needs paint, that you know, hasn't had any work done, or one that maybe has a little bit done here and there, but they see the ours that has, you know, uh, nice appliances, good quality appliances, um, you know, good paint, good carpet, like, like you said, the knobs and ceiling fans and light fixtures. Um, they, they look at that and they, they can say, well, I can just go grab my stuff from my car and move right in right now. So yeah. they, you know, um, usually it, it's very quick to, uh, to put a tenant in. But that's like a key that. factor. I mean, the, the tenant is where your money is coming from. Keep them happy. Give them a nice place to live and they'll keep them. That's yeah. an obvious thing. Two things. One is you've done a fantastic video. So everyone out there, go and check it out. It's a seven minute video on Orlando, what's mm -hmm. happening here, all the statistics and the research. And that came from them. So you're just wondering where it came from. So very well done. It's fantastic. Well put together. My second thing was, and it's quite an interesting debate that, that we're even having ourselves. We've looked at some end user single family homes. Today we've been mainly looking at condos in terms of where we are. Kind of, you've spoken quite a lot about your niche. What are the reasons for condos? I mean, yes, we're in a beautiful community here. We've got the uh, we've got facilities. You've spoken about the pools, the lakes, the you know the everything. But what's the reason for it, basically? 
a lot of people, to be quite honest, and, and this kind of goes back to the baby boomers also when they start coming down here, which they already have, but and then with younger, with younger, they, they, they send them to me. I mean, if you got a house, most likely for what they're going to pay, they're not going to have a pool. They're going to have a fitness center. They're not going to have all this stuff. It might even be somewhere else in a, in a rural area. You get that same amount. But here, they can right in the middle of town, right where all the, where the epicenters are, financial, near their employment, near their employment <laughs> all that, and they have pool, clubhouse, amenities, fitness center, all these things. Right here, and you have younger people, they're not, they don't want to do yard, they think it's cool. Like, older people, same thing, they don't want to do those things. So, that's really conducive to more condo living. It's just more of a maintenance free lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. It's an HOA, but you're, you're, you're getting, you get a lot of amenities for that. You know? Look, I mean, we get that. I mean, it's very, been a huge trend over the last 15 years in South Africa to this. Right. Um, so, we, we are a lot more used yeah, to, to, to the lifestyle living. Lifestyle living, yeah. yeah. Cool, man. Well, listen, it's been absolutely awesome seeing all this place. We really look forward to, to helping not only our, our investors, but ourselves invest in, in this wonderful place. And uh, I look forward to finding Nicky Mouse. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers.